It's 1972. I'm 18 years old and feeling like a grown-up for the very first time, as Vic and I are preparing to move into our very first one-bedroom apartment. The complex has 16 units, and we're moving into the upstairs corner unit. Not only that, but we are the on-site apartment managers, which means we get a rent reduction. It wasn't easy getting here. In 1972, and growing up in a nice middle-class home, good girls got married first, and then they moved in with their husbands. They certainly didn't abandon their families and live in sin. But I turned a deaf ear to the pleas for me not to ruin my life, not to embarrass the family and to think about my future. I was deaf to that. My mind was made up. This was my chance to be my own person and to figure out what I wanted for a change. This was my chance at freedom. I didn't know how wrong I would be. Our move to the one bedroom apartment was a giant leap forward from our previous two apartments. On my 18th birthday, I moved out of my family home and moved in with Vic, who had rented a single apartment with only one twin bed. It was a very tight squeeze and after many nights where I could barely sleep because I was squished between Vic and the wall on this very small twin bed, we ended up sharing a house with one of Vic's coworkers. But I was so uncomfortable in that, in that house, so uncomfortable, that I never left the bedroom. I didn't wander into the kitchen. I didn't cook. As a matter of fact, Vic had to cook and deliver me my meals in the bedroom. If I thought I was a prisoner at home, living there at home with my parents, it was nothing compared to what I felt now. And through my closed bedroom door, I could hear the roommate. Hey Vic, doesn't your girlfriend ever come out of the bedroom? What's the matter with her? Couldn't she at least cook something? Or come out and clean these dirty dishes? What kind of a woman is she? How'd you end up with such a girl like her anyway? How'd you get stuck with her? She's such a fucking loser. Well, after that, I could never show my face as long as the roommate was home. And of course, I couldn't tell anyone of my loneliness and despair because I couldn't admit that I had made a mistake by moving in with Vic. So when we were able to move out of that place and into our first one bedroom apartment, things were finally starting to look up for me. But before I could really begin to feel the freedom of finally having my own place, I see a problem. The mailbox, two last names, Schmidt and Kingsley. I was 100% convinced that not only the mailman, but every person who walked down the street would notice two names on the mailbox. And all of these people would know that I was living in sin and I would be judged and humiliated. I'd be called a loser. And with those thoughts came the same familiar feelings that had made me want to run and hide in my bedroom, shame, and humiliation. A loser of all losers. How could I walk through the front door? How could I come downstairs and check the mail? What would the neighbors think? What would the mailman think? What would strangers think? I was sick to my stomach that everyone would know my secret. It was bad enough that I had disappointed my parents and moved in with Vic, a boy who wasn't even Jewish. Anne had no prospects. Now I was disappointing the world. Not only that, but now everyone would know that I was not the good girl I was brought up to be. But moving back home wasn't an option. I would never admit I made a mistake. I had come up finally with a solution. It hit me. What if, what if I could just change my name to Kingsley? If I could do that, then there would be only one name on the mailbox and my secret 
and my shame would be hidden from the world. It was so easy. I couldn't believe how everything fell into place. I simply filled out a form at the Department of Motor Vehicles and they assumed I was married. Not only that, they didn't even ask for any documentation or any proof. And then another form to change my name with a social security and voila, I'm now a Kingsley, problem solved. In that moment, I learned something very important about myself. I take action. I'm a problem solver. I'm a pioneer. I do things differently. There's something within me that's unstoppable. And I also learned something else. I didn't solve the real problem of me giving away my power, my authenticity, and my individuality for the sake of what other people, people I don't even know, would think of me. Even though I longed for freedom and a chance to be my, my own person, I was still a prisoner. I wasn't free at all. I was a prisoner of my buried shame and feeling that was something wrong with me, that there's something wrong with me. That is what was running the show. On the surface, I seemed strong and confident. I was a decision maker. I took bold action. But underneath, I was riddled with self-doubt and looking for love and validation in all the wrong places. I was playing by somebody else's rules. And I sold a little piece of my soul. And I didn't even know it. It wasn't the first time this would happen. And it wouldn't be the last. <laughs>